Welcome to those who have joined. Uh, it's a one after 10, we'll get started in a minute or so. We'll wait for other folks to join. Thank you. Again, thanks everybody for joining and being prompt. Um, I'm gonna wait another 30 seconds or so and um, let folks um, join if they're coming late. We'll get, we'll get started shortly. Okay, it's about three minutes after the hour. Um, we have um, a bit of a, a stable participants list. Uh, the, the, the additional folks have sort of stopped uh, coming in at a pace. It's been pretty stable. So I think we'll go ahead and, and start our meeting. So um, with that, uh, welcome. This is the California Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, Topanga Lagoon Restoration Project, Environmental Impact Report Scoping Meeting. So thank you for being here. Um, uh, this is a, a California Environmental Quality Act um, uh, uh, meeting and scoping to get scoping input on the uh, environmental impact report contents. And a little bit on logistics for the meeting before I hand it over to uh, the State Parks representative. Next slide, if I could get a little bit of logistics. First of all, thank you for being here. Um, we really appreciate uh, you, you, you showing up on a Saturday and, and assisting with the project. Please keep your device muted. Keep yourself muted uh, through this presentation. We'll have about a uh, half an hour or, or 40 minute presentation for you this morning to start this meeting. And then we'll have uh, uh, public comment opportunities at the end of the meeting. You can also just during the presentation, put your comments into the chat. Um, the, uh, uh, just uh, click on the chat button down on the bottom of your screen and type in uh, to everyone. Uh, and uh, uh, that would be, um, uh, your comment will be uh, recorded. And all ver verbal comments uh, will be taken at the end of the meeting uh, and addressed in, and used in shaping this CEQA document. So again, thank you for your participation. If you'd like to get um, uh, more notices moving forward uh, sent to your email, go ahead and put your uh, email address in the, in the chat and uh, we will then put you on our mailing list moving forward. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to Craig Sapp um, and, uh, 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 for introductions. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Tom. Uh, well, welcome everybody, good morning. Um, as you said, I'm Craig Sapp, I'm the interim district superintendent Retired back in 2020, I'm back now, back starting in April, probably for the next several months, I'll be back in the district. Uh, and I represent, uh, as interim uh, superintendent, I re represent State Parks Angeles District, and also uh, represent as the lead agency, uh, State Parks. Um, also, I wanna acknowledge on my team, uh, Danielle Lefer, 
who's my senior environmental scientist, but also our natural, my natural resource program manager. Also, um, she's not listed on here, but Barbara Tejada, my supervisor, uh, cultural uh, resource program manager. And, uh, and uh, just again, I just wanna thank everybody for being here. So uh, going on to the next slide. Perhaps before we go on to the next slide, uh, Craig, we could have um, uh, each of the uh, agencies. Oh, yeah, that, sorry. Just so, introduce yeah, them so, really quickly. So from Caltrans landowner, additional landowner, Sean Heron from Caltrans. I apologize. Hi, my name is Sean Heron. I'm a biologist for Caltrans District 7. And I'm speaking today on behalf of Ron Kaczynski, the Caltrans Deputy District Director for our Division of Environmental Planning. Uh, he regrettably can't be here today, but he wanted to relay that Caltrans is very enthusiastic to be a part of this collaboration for this project, um, and we're happy to be here. Um, as you know, uh, we are one of the land landowners, so we'll help, we'll be helping oversee the uh, the demolition of the PCH bridge and the redesign of the new bridge that would span um, the uh, restored lagoon. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to the Los Angeles County Department of Beaches and Harbors. Thank you, Sean. Uh, my name is Ismael Lopez. I'm with the uh, Department of Beaches and Harbors, um, Capital Projects section. Um, Sam, as you, we are one of the uh, players in this in this project uh, as one of the landowners that will be affected by the uh, the scope of the project. Uh, and um, I'll hear for any follow up questions if there's any about the existing. Um, infrastructure that's there and how um, that could possibly be affected in the, in the future as, as it relates to this project. Thanks, Ishmael. I'm Clark Stevens. I'm the executive officer of the Resource Conservation District of the San Marco Mountains, and the RCD uh, for short is the uh, acting as project coordinator uh, for this process, uh, the review analysis and design process for the project. And with us also on the phone, part of the team, we have uh, Jamie King, who's uh, one of our conservation biologists and playing an important role in the coordination. And then our senior conservation biologist, Rosie Daggett, is the uh, manager of the project from our end. And uh, the other uh, um, helper on this process uh, and the lead today for this meeting is uh, ESA. So I'll hand it over to Tom. Thanks, Clark. Yeah, Tom Barnes here with Environmental Science Associates, ESA. We're a consultant to uh, state parks and RCD uh, in preparing the CEQA document and, um, and, and uh, helping assist in complying with a CEQA process. Um, so I now will hand it back to you, Craig, uh, again, and uh, for some introductions uh, 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 to the meeting. Thanks, Tom. So what we're looking at here is the project location. And this is uh, what we call the Lower Topanga Zone. And just for a little history, uh, this is a section here, Lower Topanga. Uh, back in August 2001, uh, state parks acquired 1,659 acres of this area, which later um, in 2012 was incorporated into the Topanga State Park proper through a general plan amendment. So this is the project zone. Um, and again, you can see uh, on uh, one side, Topanga State Park or Topanga Canyon Boulevard, and then you got Topanga Lagoon and then Topanga uh, Beach. And then so you can go kind of west from there um, towards Malibu, a little section there. So uh, next slide. So here you, you, in a little more detail, you see the study uh, area and then in yellow and then out in the orange, you see kind of a, a 200 foot zone and buffer zone. So, but in the lower left, you'll see these parcels. These are private properties. And while they're inside the, the buffer zone, they will not be impacted uh, by any direct change to the, the project, um, any restoration. Um, that's, that's what I got. Yeah, so anyway, here's the meeting agenda. The background is going to be the purpose of the meeting. The California Environmental Quality Act, referred to as CEQA, overview. Environmental Impact Report, EIR, and uh, its components. Uh, the project alternative description, 
uh, key issues to be addressed in the EIR uh, schedule, and then uh, at the end, uh, uh, public comments. Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so, so a little bit of background on the project. Uh, the project is really has been created to benefit uh, two federally endangered species, the tidewater goby and the southern steelhead trout. And their populations have been declining and we want to uh, create an alternative that would uh, help to increase uh, their numbers in the Topanga Lagoon area. We also uh, want to address sea level rise and erosion that threaten recreational beaches, the facilities and the surf break and replace the aging uh, 1993 PCH bridge. Next, please. So the process so far, um, today we're going to be focusing on a, a scoping meeting that initiates the formal CEQA NEPA environmental review process. But we have already had uh, two public workshops in 2020 and 2021. And uh, the alternatives that are proposed uh, today for consideration were developed based on these workshops. So we have over here a summary of the input from the previous workshops and in orange you can see the the highlights of the issues that were of most interest to the participants uh, next please so what we what we heard at that workshop um, was that one, one of the the key areas of interest was to restore Topanga Lagoon to the greatest extent possible and to really look at uh, how we can uh, reduce uh, sea level rise impacts and uh, increase resilience and coastal erosion. Next. People were also really interested in uh, how to improve the lagoon ecological function, improve goby habitat and steelhead fish passage, uh, protecting uh, nesting and beach habitat, improving water quality, and also increasing wetland and transitional upland habitat. Next. Another important component was to avoid changing the surf break. Next. And uh, we also had a lot of interest in the lifeguard headquarters and restroom and head helipad and how to relocate those uh, in the light of sea level rise impacts. Next. There was also quite a bit of interest in providing for interpretation of the site history uh, from the Native American period all the way to the present. And uh, maintaining visitor services, uh, for example, the real enchilada and Wiley's bait shop were discussed. Next. And um, also to evaluate the opportunity for Topanga, <clears throat> excuse me, Ranch Motel uh, as an affordable overnight accommodation. And um, there seemed to be uh, a, quite a few people who were more interested in uh, seeing it limited to a day use only facility. Also, it was really important for people to maintain traffic flow during construction, to preserve parking, especially no cost parking, and to increase public transportation accessibility. So thank you for all who provided guidance at that time. And now we're ready to move on to the next uh, phase of the process. Thanks, Danielle. <clears throat> so this is the next phase then to move forward with a project that uh, uh, the state parks is, is proposing to implement based on the designs um, that have been prepared. So the purpose of the meeting is to initiate that sequel pr uh, process. A notice of preparation has been prepared as required by CEQA, announcing that uh, State Parks is preparing the EIR for the project. So this public scoping meeting and the, the, the purpose of the meeting is to get your input. So, uh, you know, you can put your uh, comments in chat and we'll have a chance to talk at the end of the at the end of the meeting as well. Um, so uh, it's really a, 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 an informational process uh, for you to uh, <clears throat> support uh, the impact analysis going forward. <clears throat> Our participating agencies here, it's, it's important to say that the lead agency, again, is the, is the state uh, California Department of Parks and Recreation. 
the Army Corps of Engineers has a role as well in, in permitting, um, and they uh, will likely be a, a NEPA lead, which is a National Environmental Policy Act uh, federal process. Um, other agencies that are be responsible agencies and key, uh, key to the uh, success of the project will be Caltrans, uh, as well as the LA County Department of Beaches and Harbors. So just a basic, what is an EIR? Um, you know, at, at its core, an EIR is an informational document. It's for all of us to be clear about planning. And uh, it, it describes the range of alternatives, uh, anticipated potential effects, um, and, and provides a forum for public participation in the process. It also helps to develop mitigation measures to minimize and avoid uh, potential uh, uh, significant impacts of projects. Um, and it does not promote or advocate, it simply uh, provides transparent information. In parallel, the Federal National Environmental Policy Act uh, process uh, is similar. Uh, and it is anticipated that this uh, EIR uh, may be used, uh, uh, much of the analysis uh, may be used to support a NEPA compliance with federal agencies, which be the core, um, uh, or potentially Caltrans uh, could serve as our federal lead agency uh, 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 through their process of federal of funds, highway funds, if they are used. And so we would anticipate that an environmental assessment could be prepared to comply with NEPA and this analysis uh, should support that effort. So a uh, little, just a big uh, you know, uh, background on why a restoration project would need environmental impact analysis. And it's uh, just uh, to really understand that <clears throat> the state parks has a project they're proposing, CEQA requires that they evaluate effects. Any project could have temporary effects associated with the changes. This project in particular, um, uh, has uh, effects to land uses and, uh, and the bridge replacement. Um, and it's in the interest of, uh, the, of the state to make sure that a comprehensive environmental analysis is conducted. Um, the restorations have uh, alternatives also have different footprints uh, to be evaluated. Um, and uh, on-site development may be removed, modified or relocated. It's important to be uh, transparent about that. So the EIR will include then direct and cumulative impacts of all of the topics that the CEQA guidelines um, outlines as, as being um, important and relevant. And so this is just a, a list of all of those um, uh, environmental topics. Uh, uh, we will be a, have a comprehensive analysis. So then um, we'll, we'll get back to this after we've gone over the project description a bit, but here uh, to start with, um, we have a comment period for this notice of preparation, which is 30 days long and ends June 22nd. So we really encourage you to get your comments into us before that, that uh, 22nd deadline. Um, it, it, it's uh, uh, it, to the extent that you can get us your comments, <clears throat> really important that we hear from you um, if, you, if, you, uh, uh, if you have some uh, comments to, to, to bring. Today, uh, we will have a, a verbal comment period at the end of the presentation and you'll uh, be able to raise your hand uh, using the reactions button down below. I'll talk about that later. Um, also, if you're just dialing on a phone, a star nine and then star six, unmute. Um, when you are called on, um, I'd ask that you state your name and we're gonna provide three minutes uh, uh, for everyone to comment uh, per, per person. You can also, and we encourage you to write uh, comments today, either on the, on the chat or uh, submit any sort of letter uh, to the uh, to the uh, and send them to the address the email address here shown on the screen. That address is also on the notice of preparation itself, which is available on the RCD website and State Parks website. Um, and this is the uh, the website then address uh, for the RCD. Um, and again, um, uh, perhaps we can put that in the chat and we can find and to, to be able to just link onto that if you if you would like to. Um, also, the NOP is available at three libraries locally, listed here, the Malibu Library, the Calabasas Library, and the Topanga Library. If you'd like, we can email you a copy or, hard, uh, or, or mail you a copy uh, uh, if you request. Okay, um, so more now about the, the, the project objectives and project description, I'll hand it, hand it over to Danielle. 
Hey, um, yeah, so now we're going to dive into uh, <clears throat> the project itself. Uh, sorry, I was in the chat here. Let me just remove that. Okay, great. So, so the project objectives are to reestablish the lagoon ecosystem, to improve the hydrology of the estuary and its functions, uh, to enhance sea level rise and coastal erosion resilience, and to restore habitat and species uh, populations within the project area. The objectives also include preserving and interpreting cultural resources, and integrating public access, that's important, emergency and visitor services by all the landowners involved, and uh, to maintain traffic capacity during construction. Uh, also, managing and maintaining the lagoon to ensure long-term viability of the restoration efforts as part of the objectives. Next, please. So the proposed project key elements are to reestablish an expanded Topanga Creek and lagoon ecosystem to protect the endangered species and really all of the, um, the wildlife that uses that particular system, visitor serving improvements, and to replace and lengthen the PCH bridge to allow for additional habitat and resilience at that location. Next. Additional project elements include maintaining coastal access, including parking areas and beach recreational and habitat areas in response to sea level rise and coastal erosion, to maintain emergency access and traffic control, and to protect the existing surf break. It's also really important to maintain traffic flow condi conditions during construction. Next, please. So, so based on public input from the, the previous uh, sessions, we uh, developed, and, so, and some of our modeling, we developed uh, four alternatives for further consideration. And these are the no project alternative or managed decline. The second alternative is the maximum lagoon habitat alternative. Uh, the third is a limited lagoon habitat expansion alternative. And the fourth is a man, uh, maximum managed retreat alternative. Uh, and we will discuss uh, all four of those in detail next. Next, please. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about what's actually involved in restoration. And so in, in this particular uh, slide, you can see uh, the existing conditions. And so we're starting out with a site that has about uh, uh, 30 or so feet of fill in some areas. And uh, that fill has been there for a long time, about 100 years, and it was placed over the wetlands. So a lot of the areas that uh, now have infrastructure on them were once wetlands, uh, a, a pretty large lagoon system. So in order to restore that system, we need to remove that fill. And, um, and so that's one of the things that we're looking at doing. Uh, through this process. So in this particular digital model, you can see the channelized area, the current, uh, this is the existing conditions of the uh, channelized uh, lagoon system and the fill areas on both sides. And next. Now, uh, this particular uh, map shows the alternative two uh, conditions. And so alternative two, first I'll cover the colors a little bit. So the blue is the low elevation area. So that's the area that is most likely to be a uh, wetted area. Then the green would be additional wetlands that are at slightly higher elevation. And the yellow would be riparian and more upland area. And you can see that uh, this is the maximum lagoon restoration alternative. And it would replace the current 80 foot uh, span bridge with a 200 foot span bridge with um, that also has other um, wings on either side for a total really of about 460 feet of, of additional potential habitat under that bridge. And it would remove uh, most of the fill that's currently at that location and add a Western channel to the site. Uh, next. 
So here's a digital model of alternative three. And uh, here we would be retaining most of the ranch motel and the fill underneath that motel. And uh, except for the, the westernmost undercut structures, uh, those would be removed. And it also adds a western channel to the project. Uh, next. Alternative four is the alternative that expands the beach area uh, by moving the PCH bridge further north. So the riparian area would be added kind of east of the creek. Oh, jumped here. Um, and uh, the motel would actually be reduced in size. Okay, and now we're just going to show some quick shots of um, the the view from uh, from the east, looking from the east. So you can see PCH there, uh, and this is the existing condition. And next, this is alternative two, which is the maximum lagoon alternative, and you can see the the new wetland and the riparian channels. Uh, next, alternative three with the retained ranch motel fill area and a smaller uh, lagoon size than for alternative two. And then alternative four shows the Northern alignment of PCH and the expanded beach areas. Okay, so now what are the elements that are common to each project alternative? Well, the uh, reconfiguring and replacing the parking areas north and south of PCH, the full or partial relocation of visitor services along Topanga Canyon Boulevard, the realigning and upgrading of utilities will be needed, uh, relocating the helipad and lifeguard headquarters and restrooms, and also relocating recreational maintenance, emergency and ADA access. So all of those are components of this project. Next. So now we're gonna look more closely at alternative one. Now alternative one is the no project alternative. It's a managed decline alternative because we know that things will not stay static. We've got uh, sea level rise, uh, will have impacts on, on the current existing conditions. Uh, on the top of the slide, you can see the cross section that shows uh, the cross section through the existing conditions. And you can see the uh, fronts of the buildings on the north side that face PCH. So, so the alternative one, uh, it involves no building renovations at all. And any renovations in the future would require permitting, including um, uh, coastal development permits. Uh, it would be, uh, it would have uh, continued degradation of critical uh, habitat for endangered species and also continued degradation of the Topanga Ranch Motel and other structures in the area. Uh, also, the uh, alternative one would involve continued coastal erosion, which would undermine the current location of the lifeguard headquarters. Uh, we would lose more recreational beach space and there's no sea level rise adaptation for this alternative. Now alternative two, again, uh, just pointing out the, the color scheme here, we have blue showing the, the wetland area. Yellow is uh, uh, the upland area. Green is more riparian. And if you notice here, we've got orange as well. And the orange indicates the parking areas. Uh, so parking would be altered for alternative two. And also uh, visitor services would need to be relocated. Now, this particular map shows in white the potential excavation areas. And you can notice that uh, there are certain areas where there are circles identified where no, no excavation would take place. And so uh, the design involves protecting uh, trees, mature trees, so that those trees would not be impacted by fill removal. And uh, 
there's also a plan to leave uh, two to four feet of undisturbed fill to protect any archeological uh, sites that might be in the area. Uh, next. So alternative two would restore uh, the lagoon closer to its historic condition. It would increase um, to 9.5 acres of wetted area and over 27 acres of riparian, transitional and upland acres. And the beach would be expanded to uh, about 4.4 acres. PCH bridge span would be wider and then uh, the PCH alignment would remain as is and construction would be staged to maintain traffic flow. And then um, other components of alternative two, it would remove up to 30 feet of historic fill and existing structures, uh, remove the historic Topanga Ranch Motel and the lifeguard headquarters and helipad would also be relocated. So now for alternative three, we have uh, the Topanga Ranch Motel uh, would be retained and uh, the parking area, some of the parking area would also be retained. So you can see those in, in orange, but the uh, lagoon itself uh, would not be increased in size quite as much as in, um, in alternative two. Uh, next. So again, we can see the excavation on this protecting any mature trees. Next. And so for alternative three, the habitat improvements would create 7.7 uh, .7 acres of uh, wetted habitat, 29.5 acres of uh, riparian transitional upland and the beach acreage would be 4.4 uh, acres. So there's more habitat value uh, than existing conditions, but less than in alternative two or alternative four. Uh, next. Also the PCH bridge replacement uh, would be extend uh, the length of the, the current bridge and the alignment would remain as is. So again, construction staging would maintain traffic flow. Next. Uh, the other components are the removal of up to 30 feet of the historic fill and existing structures on the west side of the creek and lagoon only. And it would re rehabilitate most of the historic uh, Topanga Ranch Motel and the lifeguard headquarters and helipad would be relocated. Now alternative four is the maximum managed retreat alternative. And this is the one that creates uh, additional uh, beach habitat. It also uh, changes the alignment of PCH further north to allow for that. And there would be some, some Topanga Ranch Motel and some of the other uh, visitor service, service uh, infrastructure could be re retained. And you can also see the proposed parking locations at that particular uh, alternative. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Again, uh, no, uh, no mature trees would be impacted by uh, the excavation. Next. And so this particular alternative, the maximum managed retreat alternative would provide 7.6 wetted acres for the lagoon, uh, almost 30 acres of riparian transitional upland uh, habitat, and 4.5 acres of uh, beach habitat. There, uh, it has more habitat values than the existing conditions, but less than alternative two. PCH would be uh, longer to span the wider lagoon, and again, the uh, alignment would move north, so construction but construction would still maintain traffic flow. Uh, next. In addition, uh, it would remove 30 feet of historic fill and existing structures on the west side of the creek and lagoon only, 
uh, rehabilitate a smaller portion of Topanga Ranch Motel. And the lifeguard and uh, headquarters and helipad would be relocated. Next. So, so this shows the, um, the location of Topanga Canyon Boulevard uh, on closer to PCH, right at the corner there of PCH. And, and this is a potential uh, location for additional parking. So we wanted to uh, identify that and discuss that as well. You can see there's a green line kind of paralleling Topanga Canyon Boulevard, and that's the top of the slope. So that's really as far as any kind of parking infrastructure could, uh, could be developed. And all of the trees that are identified uh, by circles in that area would also be protected. So any uh, parking infrastructure uh, would work around the, the current mature trees. You can also see the uh, bus stop locations and um, these two locations would be improved to uh, potentially create um, uh, a better, uh, I wanna say habitat, <laughs> better infrastructure for visitors uh, using that, um, the buses. Uh, next. So potential temporary impacts in, during construction uh, include uh, coastal access would be restricted, including uh, reduced parking. There would be temporary impacts to biological resources, uh, potentially to water quality, and uh, the realignment of the utilities could result in temporary service disruption. Also, there would be increased air emissions and noise during that particular stage. Uh, but emergency services and traffic flow uh, would be maintained uh, during construction. Next. Potential permanent impacts include the removal of <clears throat> some or all of the existing structures, um, removal of the historic Topanga Ranch Motel, uh, the relocation of parking and beach access, uh, the relocation of the lifeguard and helipad, the PCH bridge and highway would be more resilient to sea level rise. And, and so would the recreational uh, beach areas. It would protect uh, the surf break and the lagoon biological and hydrological conditions would be improved supporting native species, including the federally endangered tidewater goby and the Southern California steelhead. Next. <clears throat> Okay, I think uh, somebody, Tom, do you take yeah. it from me? Sure. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. So that's, that concludes the overview of the, of the alternatives. Um, and this slide then uh, 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 illustrates the schedule for a CEQA evaluation and their next steps. So this is our NOP scoping meeting. The comment period ends June 22nd, as I said before. Um, when we get your input and continue the analysis um, uh, uh, of, of the project and the alternatives, uh, we'll prepare a draft environmental impact report. And we anticipate that that report will be uh, published uh, in January of 2023. So it'll take that long to really comprehensively analyze uh, these alternatives. Um, we'll have a 60 day public review and comment period at that time. So again, uh, leave your email uh, on the chat here if you'd like to be notified of the next uh, public meeting that we will have, uh, 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 which was estimated uh, in March of 2023. So it'll be some time, um, but uh, uh, we, we hope that you would attend that meeting uh, and, and have an opportunity to review the draft EIR. Once that 60-day period is over, uh, we will uh, compile all comments, uh, provide responses to those comments, and alter the analysis uh, as needed to, uh, uh, and, uh, as guided by the comments, and we will prepare a final EIR for publication uh, next summer in June of 2023. We anticipate certifying the EIR then that the state uh, parks would do that uh, in July of 2023. So that's our schedule. Um, so we're uh, go about to then shift to a uh, opportunity for public comments. Um, again, I'll say it again, uh, written comments today are great. Uh, type your comment in the chat and thank you for those who have already done so. 
um, uh, uh, super important to get your input. Um, all comments will be considered as we proceed with the environmental review. And we have really appreciated the previous input provided by the two public workshops to get to this point. You can also email your comments to Topanga Lagoon Restoration Project at esassoc.com. That URL is, uh, is the, the consultant's ESA's uh, uh, URL, but it's Topanga Lagoon Restoration Project, all one word, no spaces, at esassoc.com. You can also mail your comments to um, uh, state parks in the address here, shown in uh, the Calabasas address. And that these, these uh, addresses are on the NOP itself, which you can find on the website of the state parks and RCD. So um, as, we, as we then uh, pivot towards verbal comments, um, there is a, if you, if, you, if you look on your screen um, in the bottom of the Zoom call, there's a, a reactions button there and, and a button that says raise hand. Um, and so anyone who wants to provide verbal comments today, uh, please raise your hand um, uh, that in, in that way and I will call on you um, and then we'll have a three minute clock. Um, so we've got the clock up here, thanks for that. Um, if you're joining by phone, uh, you can dial a star nine and then star six, unmute yourself. And then um, and you'll have to not be able to use the, uh, the, the hand raise, you'll have to just um, interject your interest uh, to, to comment and I'll call on you uh, when, when, um, when we're ready, when we have time in the, in the queue. Okay, uh, so when when um, when I call on your name, you can unmute yourself. Uh, the timer will be appear on the screen, and you'll have three minutes. And uh, appreciate keeping your comments respectful. And um, but look, looking forward to uh, making sure you get your interests um, uh, into the record here. Um, okay, so I think with that, we're ready to go for our first uh, uh, comment, and I will call on. Um, uh, I see a couple hands. Uh, ben Lebro from Topanga Residential. Um, uh, why don't you unmute yourself and you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. <clears throat> um, I'd like to thank everybody for an extraordinary amount of work. Yeah, I, I don't. Now I have my hand up. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for a really extraordinary amount of work that's obviously been put into thinking out these alternatives. Um, my my one concern is that I notice there appears to only be a provision for the preservation of one of the historic businesses there, which is um, the real inn, which makes me a little sad because we're talking about preserving the surf break, which is going to be an evolving thing no matter what anyway. And yet, you know, like Wiley's Bait and Tackle, which I've been going to since I was four years old and I just started taking my four-year-old daughter to and some of the other historic businesses there like would be lost. And I guess it was just a little bit concerning, like we were talking about preserving the Topanga Ranch Motel, which I actually thought was a neat idea, but we were talking about preserving you know, a dilapidated structure that hasn't been used in decades and not allowing any option for the other existing businesses. Um, I would really like to, you know, continue take my children, you know, continue taking my children to reel in as my parents took me and then ultimately take my grandchildren there, hopefully. Um, you know, uh, I really like uh, the options that allow the preservation of some of those businesses that have been a very important part of our lives growing up and that we hopefully be part of our lives in future. I do notice that alternative four says that there are potential options for business leases to occur subsequently. And I wanted to really, I was really hoping to hear what you might have to say about, is that something that was supposed to allow a backdoor for some of those existing businesses to return? Or is that going to end up just being an opportunity for some bougie, douchey, super wealthy kind of, you know, businesses catering to, you know, like, you know, people who have no real stake in there, you know, just, you know, putting money into the, you know, county or city's coffers by paying exorbitant rents for a lease there. If you know, like there's an option for subsequent businesses, I would hate to see the existing businesses just wiped aside and you know, other businesses allowed in that have no real stake or historic uh, role in you know, uh, that part of our you know, beloved area. It, but aside from that, 
I, you know, it's amazing what you guys have done. And uh, since this is, of course, the most southern place that steelhead actually run on the entire continent of North America, it would be extraordinary. And I've seen what was done at Malibu Lagoon. I admit I was terribly skeptical um, at the scope of what was going to be done in Malibu Lagoon. And it was a resounding success. What was done there was truly extraordinary. And I have yearned for years for exactly you know, that kind of restoration to be done you know, to Topanga Lagoon. You know, anytime I've ever seen the ancient pictures of it in its historic condition, it makes me sad because riparian habitats and especially uh, mudflat and wetland habitats are my very favorite habitats um, in all of my marine biology interest. But I would really hate to lose some of that historic, you know, that historic businesses that have been such an important part of our lives. And uh, I will email some comments about that as well and appreciate your time and the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we really appreciate those comments. Uh, uh, the, the next hand I see is uh, Michael McNamara. My, Michael, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Yes, I am. Thank you for the opportunity. Go for it. Um, yeah, uh, what does, uh, of a question, but you don't have to answer it right away, but what, what does rehabbing the hotel mean exactly? Um, I'm not really sure what that means. And, and the reason why I'd ask is I kind of want to echo what Ben was saying that it, it, if I think if there could be a trade-off that uh, preserving the local businesses, especially small businesses like those ones that are there, would, would I think I'd be happier to see that happen than rehabbing a hotel that, um, I mean, as, as kitschy as it looks in its current condition, um, really, I think I would sacrifice that over the over the businesses, and that's that's all I really wanted to say. Thank okay, you. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for the, that comment. Um, uh, much appreciated. Um, uh, let's continue. I see Gilbert Dembo. Gilbert, can you unmute yourself? Gilbert, are you there? Okay, there, there you go. Uh, yeah, you're on. My name is Gilbert Dembo. I'm a property owner in the area. The main thing that you never mention, and you haven't done any research, is the effect it'll have on the surfers in the area. Topanga Beach is one of the major surfing beaches on the coast. Right now, all of the parking is used by surfers. And so they're there early in the morning and they will take up all the parking. How many spaces will you have? What is the maximum uh, number? That's one thing. And will this affect the surf break in any way? Will, can you enhance the surf break uh, by putting a, some kind of a reef out there to enhance it? The other thing that I'm concerned about is uh, the number of parking spaces that are available to this uh, new project. Will that, will you increase the number that are there? And I can tell you that people will not walk across PCH uh, to go to the habitat. Because if you compare it with the uh, Malibu Lagoon, there they have inadequate parking there. The other thing that I would like to know is if you're going to remove all the high power poles, telephone or power poles um, in front from the from your boundary all the way up the coast. You didn't indicate that you would put all the utilities underground. So I'd really like those questions answered. Okay, that's that's all I had to say. Thank you, Gilbert. Appreciate those comments. Um, I have one other uh, speaker, Eileen. Yeah, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. I'm really impressed. I'm a fairly recent arrival to the Topanga area. I am not a surfer. I wish I was young enough to take it up. I'm a passionate beach walker uh, and I use the, the, the parking 
a lot. Uh, so I just wanted to voice that other people besides surfers use the, the beach on a regular basis. And I have a very strong interest in advocating for the non-human uh, and would really like to see you continue to focus on those elements. I think we have taken so much from the natural world over the last 200 years of our more recent colonization. And though I respect the nostalgia for the businesses and their continuation, I really, really believe that um, we start giving back and I appreciate and salute your efforts to do so in these plans. That's all I have to say today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. Appreciate that. And then I've got Stephanie Rammer. Can you unmute yourself, Stephanie? There you go. Hi there. Um, I, I just want to say, um, I, uh, I'm a local surfer and I've been surfing at Topanga, uh, I don't know, pushing probably 25 years, 23 years now. Um, and I'm there often at hours. Uh, anyway, bottom line is I also, like the man before, uh, have concerns about parking. I, all of the plans I need to review, I'm, I need to review what I think about each of those a little further, but I don't hear a mention of parking. Currently, there's plenty of free parking also uh, along PCH, um, which a lot of us surfers use because personally, I surf at very odd hours and um, I use that parking a lot. The, the lots are not open. No one's around during a lot of the hours that I surf. So, and I also have an issue where I couldn't walk real far to get to the beach either. I have a knee issue. And I'm just, I'm thinking even in terms of, I don't know, it, it, when you're talking about huge length, lengthening of the bridge, and I don't, I know you, when people can't park on these bridges, and, um, and so I'm just wondering what's going to happen to the free parking in particular, and the parking that's accessible, yeah, that's not, uh, you know, locked off at certain, you know, many hours or that's, you know, that you have to walk far from the other side or this sort of thing. I, I don't want to see um, that parking that makes the beach accessible and <clears throat> the area accessible to disappear. And um, that's not real restricted to people who are going to be, be paying and coming just, you know, once a week or once a month or something like that. So, for those of us who are there daily at times, I'd like to know about easy access and and free. And um, that's all my only comment right now. I have other things that I need to review further before I have more comment. But thank you. I appreciate the accessibility of this meeting. And that's all I have to say right now. Thanks. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate your comments and uh, look forward to, to hearing more from you. Um, I have another hand up, Anne Reddy. Good morning. Um, I too appreciate some of the detail that you've gone to and clearly from um, Danielle's presentation of uh, alternative number one, something needs to be done. Um, however, I believe that you all have glossed over some important details um, not being Malibu residents yourselves, um, I'd like you to explore more fully the quality of life for the neighborhood during your two years of construction. Um, those of us who live in Malibu and those of us who drive through it know that currently the traffic is nearly impossible. And um, I don't think you've put quite enough attention on to really how you're going to mitigate, using one of your words, um, the traffic flow situation. You are talking about the mouth of Malibu and its um, access to Santa Monica and all of Beverly Hills, and it's going to be a problem. And it's apparently, um, Danielle failed to mention what we read that this is going to last about 18 to 24 months. Um, I, on the subject of the quality of life uh, for the neighborhood, 
Uh, you also glossed over, oh, there will be some um, utility uh, disruption. What does that mean? And how long is the dis each disruption? When we lose our internet and our electricity, as happened in Malibu on Thanksgiving Day, uh, it's quite disruptive. And, you know, Malibu deserves better. Um, there's also the discussion about buses. You're talking about bringing in a lot of buses, making it a tourist attraction. <clears throat> which, um, also, in addition to the comments made about the local businesses, hurts the, the, the rural aspect of, of Malibu quite considerably. We really don't want it to be a tourist attraction. We don't want a lot more traffic. We don't really need a whole lot more parking. And I'm not sure we really need a motel. So please consider these things as carefully as you've considered the steelhead trout and um, the uh, erosion and all of that. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate that. Um, very good comments and um, uh, they are in the public record and, uh, and we will definitely be um, uh, uh, evaluating these concerns in, in the environmental process. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Um, I do have uh, uh, Gilbert who wants to speak again. <clears throat> Gilbert, let's, let's hold off for a bit to see if anybody else wants to talk. Um, I do see now Melina. Melina Watts, would you like to talk? Yeah, I, I, I want to start by saying that this is spectacular work and I'm so uh, delighted to see the efforts underway to create a Tobago Lagoon restoration. The only question I have is I'm interested in if there's any assessment of the water quality improvements that might result from this project. Uh, if that could be defined, I think that could possibly lead to funding support for the endeavor. Thank you for your work. I grew up on the speech. I am delighted. Thank you for that comment. Um, uh, I have a, a Cami Col Col Colbert. Is that right? Yes, hi. Hey, you're on. Hi, um, yeah, I was just, I've been basically living on Topanga Beach Drive for 50 years this summer. And, um, you know, growing up and using those pedestrian bridges that go underneath, uh, I just feel like, I hope you're considering that moving forward because well, that's, got really uh, dangerous with people crossing the highway all the time. And I'm not even sure if the people that just come there and use it daily, if they are aware, there's not much signage that there is even a, you know, under crossing for, the, for pedestrians. And I just feel like there's going to be a tragedy there at some point if it's not addressed, and especially with all this construction, it should be really, really thought about. I mean, there's many people every single day that just stand in that middle lane and they cross and it's just, it really is an accident waiting to happen. Good, thank you. Good comment. Yeah, that's basically it. it. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating. Michael Bedner. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate all the work you've done. Uh, however, I have a, a number of questions. One, the cost, the overall cost. Is it a million dollars a fish that you're, you're providing to save them? Um, uh, I, have, I happen to have lived on this beach since 1964. So I've surfed it, I know it, I've walked it, every inch of it. And I think you're not giving enough attention to the people that actually dwell here. There's a whole group of us, we're your neighbors, and you have basically ignored us. You just drawn a line and said, that's the end of it. I would think that you would really try to see about the erosion of the beach going further you know, up the beach rather than just at, your, at the county line. Um, I'm really trying to figure out how you're gonna pay for it. And why does a bridge that was built in 1979 only last 25 years before you have to replace it? How long will the new bridge last? And I have to chime in where the young lady said, why, why is it so long? Um, there's so many things, so many questions that we have that have come up again. Um, and I don't believe the 18 month to two year construction time, that's never really happened. It's already always been a lot longer. Uh, and just getting it through this process is taking years. 
So <laughs> along with the other people that dwell here, uh, I really have a concern for too many things. You, there's a palm tree out in this beach here that's more than a mature tree. We saved that tree during the Topanga fire. I was married under that tree. I know that, and that's, that's gonna be thrown away. I, I would say, I would ask you to at least consider moving it. I don't even, th I don't even know why you have to remove the overall, uh, we call it the, the dune, uh, to expand the lagoon. Maybe it expands on the east side. There are so many concerns that I have that uh, I, I'll put them in writing and send them to you. But I, I'm, you know, I, I have the most impact since I'm your closest neighbor. So I really would like to have you consider some of these issues. I want to know the cost because I'm paying for it. And, uh, and I want to know the impact because all the people that are living here are paying for that going forward. So thank you very much for just taking these brief comments. As I said, I have three pages of comments I've already written and I'll send them to you, but I wanted to be heard from the simple standpoint that I'm your neighbor, consider us. And we really want the, the elements across the road to be considered. Um, you know, all the restaurants and Wiley's, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Um, thoughtful comments and um, uh, really appreciate your, your uh, sharing today on, on the, the call and look forward to uh, detailed comments uh, from you. Um, does anybody else have um, a comments to provide today? I see Gilbert, your hand is up. We're, we want to avoid um, uh, uh, duplicate commenting, but to see if we have some time here. I just, I have one comment. Sure. Um, you, what you're doing is you're making a change from an active recreational area to a passive recreational area. So have you studied the effect that you'll have on the people that use the beach right now versus the numbers of people that will uh, visit the park because there's several, you know, what are the numbers of uh, Malibu Lagoon and then you have a regional park under construction at Patero Canyon. So if you would review that and see how you're gonna affect the people that use the beach now, I think that's very important. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And, um, and uh, Gilbert, look forward to, to uh, written comments if you'd like as well and provide as much of, as much of the uh, input as, as you, as you uh, uh, would like to and feel is appropriate. Um, so thank you all for participating today. I don't see any more hands. Oh, oh Doug, D did you wanna, are you calling in on your, on your phone? Yes, I am. And uh... there you go. So the, why don't, if you'd like to comment, why don't you start? Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the meeting. Uh, a few concerns. Um, I'm a third generation Santa Monica Bay resident, also a scuba diver. And I know how fragile and unique the Topanga offshore habitat is. Uh, and, and that hasn't been really addressed in a cumulative aspect. Uh, I've got a lot of notes here, so I'm gonna have to write in, but you didn't say anything about California Coastal Commission meetings and that schedule or Santa Monica Bay Restoration Committee meetings and that schedule. Uh, I am for the bridge replacement. We are gonna have more severe uh, storms coming and uh, you need that. And I'm most concerned about the, uh, the Southern Steelhead Trout and the Tidewater Gobi habitat and Malibu Lagoon not being a comprehensive restoration. The upper watershed wasn't properly addressed. The dam that my father, Dr. Rim and C. Face, said it should have come down in the 1970s, the Ringe Dam is still there in Malibu. Uh, and I see that that is, it was a disaster, primarily because you're not reaching out to Central California experts in trout habitat restoration, and that would be the Carmel River Steelhead Association. Uh, that's a major concern. Also on the tribal cultural resources aspect, I was a friend of John Tommy Rosas, and you may know he was the tribal litigator for the Gabriel Tongva Nation. He lived 
at the um, uh, Topanga Ranch Motel for extended periods of time. So I know the cultural significance to the indigenous Native Americans that you should, I'm suggesting that you should consider maximizing uh, that to be a, a tribal cultural resource center, lodging for Native Americans, managed by Native Americans, uh, the Gabriel Tongva and the Chumash. Um, there's, there's so much here to discuss. If you're going to be widening the lagoon, and you should take the native rocks, and you might want to consider placing them near the offshore. That would help for cap, uh, kelp bed restoration, as well as sea level rise. I don't see how you can uh, mitigate for sea level, level rise without uh, putting more kelp bed structure off the near shore. Um, it's a, I need to discuss this primarily. I'd like to talk to uh, someone from the RCD, Santa Monica Mountains. Uh, you have my contact information. I hope they reach out to me and I'll do my best to uh, write in. Uh, again, the, that shore break is fragile. It's not only there for surfers. I've surfed it and, and boogie boarded there for my lifetime. Uh, my father and my neighbors were lifeguards in that uh, station. Uh, that's important, but there's also, what are you gonna do for increasing uh, recycled water, uh, healthy water for the steelhead uh, trout? What are you going to do for removing native invasive, excuse me, invasive species? What are you going to do for uh, native plant restoration centers, uh, volunteer uh, opportunities, uh, educational opportunities that could be at the uh, redesigned Topanga Ranch Motel? I also uh, eat at the Real Inn. It, it would be beneficial for the locals as well as uh, all of us that surf and, and travel on the, the coastal area to be able to uh, eat there and, and, and enjoy that because so many of our historical uh, eateries are being lost. Uh, there are the habitat of the coastal area for just diving and snorkeling. I've dove there and seen more horn sharks than ever. It's, it's a nursery. It's unique to the Santa Monica Bay. There's no break like it or, or uh, eelgrass beds. It's so important that you protect that fragile nursery if a project is to be done. Uh, Thank there's you. also you tar seeps out there that need to be, uh, you have to be careful not to fill so you can't put too much fill in the ocean. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for those comments. And I, 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 I just in interest of, of um, of everyone's time, please put those in in, on, in writing and and uh, uh, and and present them in, in, in as, as much detail as as you as you can. Um, excellent comments, and we appreciate your participation today. Thank you, Tom. I um, I do think that uh, um, I don't see any more hands. Um, do I? Is there any caller that uh, hasn't spoken that would like to speak right now? Not hearing any, um, I would uh, encourage putting your uh, email address uh, on the chat uh, to to be uh, to to receive future notices about the project. Um, uh, I, I think that uh, if you'd like a copy of the presentation, that we should uh, have that uh, 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 available as well. Um, and uh, and the NOP is available on the website. Um, so with that, I think uh, ends the public comment period. Really appreciate all the thoughtful comments, lots of good information. Um, and to close the meeting then, I will pass it back over to Craig Sapp with State Parks. Craig? Yeah, thank you, Tom. I, I really, uh, I wanna thank everybody. I know it was really enlightening listening to all your comments, both in the chat, I was following those as the, quote, as the uh, presentations went along. Um, and then everybody's verbal com uh, disc uh, comments as well. And so, I mean, it'd be really helpful for us that you can put those uh, comments, although we did record these and we're gonna be going through those, for us is if you can send us those comments that you have really thought out comments, put it, send them to us uh, you know, again by the 22nd. And you, there's the email address. And then at the bottom, you'll see that the transcript as Tom mentioned, that will be available there. Um, and I, one thing I would um, ask that you do, um, encourage you to do actually, 
If you're interested, you're going to be sending those comments. Go to the go to the state park website and look at the general plan. This is 2012, and it, it does discuss many of the comments that you had, and that will help you frame you, you know what comments you you submit. So go to the state park website. You type in the bank the general plan. You'll it'll be go right to the page, and you can just uh, at your leisure you can go through that. Um, again, uh, that's all I have at this point. Again, I'm so happy to hear everybody's comments. Um, I'm really heartened to hear that, that uh, people were encouraged um, by the success of the Mount of the Lagoon project, and that kind of gives you an idea of uh, you know how thoughtful the process is uh, in terms of the Topanga restoration project. So, um, with that, if uh, any of the Caltrans or Beach and Harbor, uh, RCD, uh, ECA have any additional comments? I will say that um, both the state parks and the uh, resource conservation uh, district, the RCD have just put in their website links in the chat. If you wanna go right now into that chat and copy those or link those, do so now. Uh, we'll keep this screen on for, for a little bit, but not forever. So go in there now and uh, it, 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 those are just uh, a quick links that are available in, in the chat they just put in there just now. And Tom, real quickly, I do want to acknowledge that Christine Conley from Cultural Resource Administrator for the Don Bredino Tongva uh, was here um, in, in the uh, discussion. So I want to acknowledge her. Okay, with that, I think we close the meeting. We'll keep this uh, 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 on for a couple minutes. Um, uh, to, so, so we can look at the chat and make sure we, we grab everything. But I think that uh, then closes the meeting. Thank you all for your participation today.